talk about design concepts, uh, selection matrix, and then our focus on So our first concept we came up for was our tank drive system. Uh, some of the good parts, uh, parts of it is it has a, a wide contact area, so it has good grip on all surfaces. It can carry the weight well because it does distribute that weight across the tracks uh, smoothly. Um, it looks good. Uh, and we'll be able to carry more sensors because we were, all our prototypes are more to do with the base which are going to carry the sensors that we add on. Problems with that is that it needs more expensive uh, and they do wear out the tracks quicker because every turn that you're doing does uh, run across the ground. And the battery was either going to have to be bigger or it wasn't going to last as long. Uh, the next one we have is our four-wheel drive, four-wheel steer unit. It's uh, very maneuverable and uh, it's lower chance of jamming under a vehicle because it has the four wheels that will be able to pull it out and also turn on the spot uh, and pull it in a different direction. Each of those wheels drives separately and turns separately. So if one of them does break down or gets disconnected, it still has the power to pull itself out of the way, uh, out of the area. Problems with that, this type of unit is, it does have a higher cost and it's harder to program because you've got to actually program each wheel with power and steering and it's got more areas to fail. So it does have redundancy if one does fail, but it actually has more areas to fail because everything does everything. The next one is our pneumatic drive system. Uh, for this one we have the power being supplied by compressed air which would uh, propel the system along. With this we'd be able to uh, use it for longer so it has the pneumatic systems uh, quicker recharging last longer uh, and you've got less chance of sparks because there are no uh, electric motors in it. Problems with that is it's got two types of charges and everyone knows how to uh, everyone knows how to uh, charge up their phone with power but not that many people know how to actually charge a pneumatic system up. So there'd be higher training costs with that one and more instruction in it. Uh, the next one we've got is the two-wheel drive and steer system. It's more portable uh, because the unit's going to be carried into place where the vehicles are. So that is a consideration. Uh, it's easier for us to program because it only has two wheels to, to drive and steer and it's got less to go wrong. Problems with that is if something does go wrong, will basically just turn around the circle because it won't be able to get out of the way of anything. Uh, and it, yeah, it doesn't have any redundancy. Another thing that looks pretty ugly. <laughs> uh, so this is our selection matrix. Uh, safety was high, so that's uh, this two-wheel drive system got high marks for that. Uh, the cost was a, a factor as well for us split the cost up for initial cost and ongoing cost. So the pneumatic system scored well with the ongoing cost because batteries tend to hold their charge for a while but after a year or two you have to throw them away because they don't hold their charge. With the pneumatic system that would have just been able to keep going permanently. Uh, they are all, the one that scored the best all up was our chosen two wheel drive, two wheel steer which didn't have any too bad at points, but it didn't actually win on everything either. So our specifications that we uh, had to go with, had to consider when we were making this unit was the height, because it's going under a vehicle. The Australian standards for the minimum height of a vehicle is 100 millimetres, so we had to make sure that it would go under that amount, so it would go under the lowest vehicle speed. The speed was actually going to be slow because it had to uh, have a 
a camera mounted on it, and if it was going too fast, you wouldn't be able to see what's going on. So we had to slow it down a lot from what, what became the standard. The camera we've mounted on this is a wide-angle camera, so you get a good field of view. Uh, because it's up close, if it had a narrow view, you'd only see a small bit and you'd have to go all over the vehicle. It would take a lot longer to actually scan a vehicle. The power, because it is a portable unit, we, we couldn't have too much power because it's got to carry everything. And with the weight, because the person's got to move the, move the unit to where the vehicles are, it's got to be a low weight so they, it doesn't hurt injure them. The unit, we programmed it in C uh, because we had some knowledge of that. There were some programs that we were able to modify to do for ours to actually uh, work with so we could use it um, for for our purposes. And that was converted to hex for the Atmega 8 chip because it doesn't actually understand code, uh, sorry, uh, doesn't understand C code, it only understands uh, hex. Okay, so uh, this is our a quick run of it. So this is the monitor that you've been holding and uh, the camera is dead. Uh, I'll just see if it can get going for a bit. Um, it does go, but uh, not. Um, so the good thing about this is you can actually have multiple cameras. So you can be training someone so you can see what they're looking at and see if they're interpreting correctly. You can also have the um, display going to a computer to record each car, each vehicle. So later on if you miss something, you can go back over and use that as evidence. Um, and, and use that for training to see if they're picking things up. Also the unit would have different instruments on it for different purposes. So at the moment it's just got the camera on it, but you could put a Geiger counter on it if you were after a nuclear substance or a drug detector if you're a customs officer. Um, so we'll be able to pick up different things for what you're looking for. But uh, it's just up to the camera, so it's good for roadworthy uh, certification and stuff like that if your police could take it to a um, roadside stop when they're stopping the vehicles and just run it or with the modifications. So we can start it up. So this is a simple track. So the car would be above it and it will just go and scan underneath. So we'll just uh, skip it through to where it's uh, going. So we had to slow it up a lot uh, because when it was going quickly, it was actually uh, This would trace under a vehicle and then go back to the start again for the next vehicle to drive along to the same spot. So you'd have a car pull up to a line, uh, have it run the scan, the unit would go back to the start, the vehicle would drive off, and the next vehicle would come along and it run again. Uh, so some of the things we've learned from this project was uh, choosing our design, using the design matrix. We hadn't used those before. Working within a team environment, delegating the tasks among each other, among ourselves, and uh, we 
did have a teammate leave, so we had to rearrange that, uh, what we were doing, uh, and actually work a bit harder to try and get everything done. Um, one of the other skills we gained was definitely with electronics. Um, we learned how just soldering techniques and all that sort of stuff. Also, different with programming and robots, so get to those speeds and trace them like this. Yeah. Uh, any questions? Uh, yeah. So, um, on, on, your, on, the, on the demonstration you had there, how did you get it stopped? Like, it just goes... Uh, well, it, it stops. You could, this is more of a proof, proof of concept. Uh, so, we just had a black line there stopping it once it hits enough of that, but you can have it uh, just or something in its current form and stuff. It's not how you'd have it in your office. This is more a proof of concept, not an actual thing that sells. Because there's actually nothing out there that does this. And it's not a fully automated one. And when you say it detects that it can tell whether the bomb or illegal thing, does it have a sensor on it that, does it have a sensor in it actually beeps or does something when it sees it or well it still relies on the if we had a bomb detector on it we'd have to bring a bomb for it to detect. Yeah but <laughs> 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 no what I mean is like you know you can have any kind of sensor that to Yeah that's it's it more a platform and we've put on the camera sensor uh, just to show what how it would be used for the police or um, the main roads they were checking for modifications to vehicles. You could just throw it onto the car and, and have it scanned and get recorded for evidence later that it's actually a uh, With the fuel um, issues with the battery life and the pneumatics and things like that, um, would you consider one of the low profile um, nitro motors, um, the high octane nitro motors that are still quite small, run easily and easy to fill up? Would that be? How safe are they with around bombs? <laughs> what is safe around bombs? Well, this is an electric motor, so it is sealed, uh, but it's probably safer than an actual motor going around. True. So, so the real Plus, thing we'd look at making a bit bigger unit, and so we're maybe using rechargeable battery, something like that, or a cordless skill or something like that. So. Plus, with that setup, it's probably like the uh, pneumatic setup, which you've got a different fuel, and people know how to charge up things with tank electricity, but I don't know how to fill up a petrol tank with, what is it? Nitro fuel, it's just a nitro, yeah, and you might get that stuff from. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and what is the range of your camera sensor? It's actually a rear, it's a, a rear view parking sensor that we've chopped off and chopped off the bits. So it's a wide, it's got a wide angle mm. on it. Uh, it's infinity. Basically, but it, it really can only see for a large because the parking is because you're looking at it on the thing, uh, it only goes to a couple of meters for the view, then it's sort of fish eye. So, it's very simple. Yeah, it's very simple. Yeah, it's very simple. Yeah, in your specifications part of it, I think the report covered the actual values are because you know. We had the specification, but it got too wee. Oh, yeah. We took about, yeah, because we had the some high, high. We did have the hundred mil high, which is in these things, but yeah. it's in our it's report. Like, but it's, yeah. It actually came out. It was just a whole paragraph of writing. Then. 